What's up? Dave here again. Just gonna talk about a few nights today. Kind of more or less just BSing because got nothing better to do sitting in the garage. Uh, pretty much looking at the Dam Designs, Cerebus, however you say it, and the Kubi KB237. Kind of got these both because uh, Dirt Warner kind of suggested them as a budget knife and actually you know, haven't really handled any budget knives in a long time, so I figured why not take the challenge and see what the 50, sub $50 knives were like. To be honest with you, I'm kind of blown away by the quality that you get now with a $50 knife. Like, kind of didn't expect it to be anywhere in the needle ballpark of where these are. I mean, both of them are pretty damn solid knives. I mean, ultimately, they're not really for me. They're for someone else. I hate to be a snob like that, but it's kind of where I'm at in my collection as of right now. And uh, sorry if you hear the dog walking around. He's just curious about what's going on in here. Uh, quick shout out, a couple people. First of all, Jason from Brass Brigade. Yeah. All right, brother. Just wanted to holler at you. Uh, everybody that commented on my last couple of videos. My boy from work, just Alex Beza. Middle Age Moto. Thanks for watching, bro. Knives in Our Lives, Colorado Dave. CJ from Cyclotron. Kurt Dirk, of course. All you guys, man. Appreciate all y'all. I heard someone say it the other day and it pretty much rang true for me that you know your wife get tired of hearing about knives you gotta talk to strangers online well except for alex i don't know any of you guys in real life so it's kind of cool that people come check the videos out and see what's going on hear what i got to say about them anyhow so i want to start with the damn designs because out of the two it's probably my favorite I mean, that's a really good stone wash man kind of dig it I'm not gonna like go through specs and stuff you guys can find that stuff you know how it is man like i'm just kind of roll through more or less kind of show you the knife give me some thoughts and that sort of thing so people have said it before though pocket clip just don't like that pocket clip man that thing sucks but as far as the way the knife feels like it's a pretty decent sized knife pretty robust pretty decent blade stock i mean all in all it's been a hell of a good slicer too it actually works pretty good task i've done with it i've not done a hell of a lot with it but i did let alex borrow this for a day and uh he seemed to enjoy it actually I let him borrow both of them and uh on the kubi i actually let my boss and alex both hold it for a minute both these guys have those i think it's called a kershaw cryo you know that janky little hinderer design one it's like a 8cr 13 mov blade that dulls up in like five seconds and both of them wandering around butter knife so had some cycle time at work the other day so i went ahead and sharpened both their knives for them and they're both so pathetic i think uh i think we're going to give one of these to alex or maybe both of them to him i don't know and uh see how he likes these a little better see how they hold up a little bit better because this those kershaws oh jesus they were horrible i mean the missing lock bar over travels like the screws their angles were all off because they were using them i don't know it's just crazy Anyway, so to talk about the Kubi for a minute. Uh, the Kubi is definitely a more thinner, but almost like sleeker feeling. I don't know, it's hard to describe. Like it seems faster and the bearings seem better. It just has a different feel to it. Like out of the two, it definitely feels better as far as playing with it, fidget factor, that sort of thing. But as far as like, I don't know, actually using it, I, I go with that damn designs. I like that a lot. Both these have D2 blades, but y'all probably already know that anyhow. It seems like the thing everybody's doing as far as the imports is D2 for the liner locks, mostly G10. One thing I think is really cool about this, both these guys, the nested liners, where this other basically countersunk in there, so you can't see the liners, unlike you know the traditional liner lock designs. Southern Grad, Bad Monkey, in case you didn't know like where you're exposed on the liners. So I think it's kind of cool that they hide them all. Uh, the value you pay for these, like, you, let's just look at the whole thing together. Sorry about bouncing the phone around on you guys. So looking at all three of these, like, is this worth five times what these are worth? No, hell no, not to me. I mean, it's still a nice knife, but 14C28N, American made. It's got some finer details on it for sure. Like, I don't know if you've seen the Bad Monkey or not. Most of you probably have. If you hadn't. Quick roll through. I mean, it's a cool knife. Don't get me wrong. All custom hardware. The, you know, carbon fiber. But it's 14C28N on the on the blade. So it's not like it's higher end steel. 
I mean, I guess all the rage now, people like the Chinese knives with the 14C28N, but I mean, do you really know what materials they're giving you? I heard someone talking about aircraft grade aluminum. And if you guys don't know, I'm a machinist, work at a machine shop. Parts we do have to have certifications with them. Damn, I keep hitting this phone. Parts we do have to have certifications. So if you don't have certs, you can't sell the part, which means you can't get any materials from China in order to do anything that goes in an airplane or a missile or defense contract parts, nothing. Because they, they don't trust what's coming from China. So these say they're D2. Are they really pure D2? I don't know. I'm just throwing the question out there. I ain't trying to bash nobody. I'm just saying, okay? But as a just a knife, like just functionally, I don't, I don't think you could wear these guys out. I honestly don't. I, and that's kind of why I want to give that one to Alex. Because if you saw his knife, before, I should have took a picture of it. If I saw the, if you saw the thing before I sharpened it and put it to like looking like a knife again, uh, it's pretty much wore the hell out. Like it wasn't really useful as a knife anymore. Maybe a pry bar. It's about all it's worth. So, you know, the guy with only one knife needs a good knife. Let's see how this lasts for him. Let's see how good the blade holds up and the knife holds up. Um... Uh, you know, I generally don't carry bearing knives at work. I'd rather do phosphor bronze, but um, you know, it's just, I don't know. I'm just kind of curious to see how it lasts. I know I personally am not going to carry these two, like snobbery or whatever you want to call it. Like, I don't feel like I have pride of ownership carrying either one of these two knives. Is it because it's a $50 knife? I don't know. It's still a good knife. I'm not going to deny it's a good knife. I, I see the value in it. Like, when I went to go buy these, um, Dirk basically said, buy them. If you don't like them, send them to me and I'll give you your money back for them. I'm, like, I'm not going to do that. Like, that was a cool ass offer from the dude, but like, it's 50 bucks a piece, man. I mean, it's, it's, for me, that's pretty much nothing. Like, and Alex is in a position where a $50 knife might last him three, four, five years before he decides to want another one. <laughs> Plus, you see the guy, he just learned how to basically light switch and push button he didn't know the difference between the two and the flipper so that you know he's kind of new in the whole knife thing and that's kind of where i see these at these are kind of like the gateway drug you know when you get these oh shh, nothing but up from there like if you can be happy here and stay here and this level right here you're doing better than me man because uh i i wish i could stay right here it'd, it'd be way easier on the wallet that's for damn sure uh you know just one of those things, I think, once you get above a certain price level, you kind of expect a certain amount of quality out of a knife. And not saying these aren't quality, because they are quality for what they are. They're just not what I would consider pride of ownership. And it's, Jason said it the other day. It's like, you take it out, and nobody's going to care. You know, Jason from Brass Brigade. He's like, basically, like, you show it to somebody, and they're like, yep, that's a knife. So what? Like, th that's exactly how the feeling I get when I when I look at these two. Um uh, but like, let's show some American versions or comparisons, I guess you'd say. Like this damn design Cerberus, Cerberus, whatever the hell you call this damn thing, reminds me a shit ton, I don't know why, of this 0456. Am I the only one that can see that? Like, that, that definitely resembles the same knife. And I love, absolutely love the 0456. Like, I don't carry it to work because it's a bearing knife. I don't like carrying bearing works to a machine shop, obvious reasons, I would think. Um, and it's way heavier. It feels more robust. Of course, it's better quality materials and that sort of thing. But, you know, even if this was a liner lock, I just feel like it's a, I don't know, more me kind of knife than what this is. Like, but it's very well comparison, right? So what are you talking about for these? I don't know what they ran there. 280, 300, whatever the hell they were versus I think it was 48 bucks. <laughs> you can buy five of these wear out four of them and still have one i'm sure as hell that this would still be a good knife but i mean either way like i'm just saying like you five of these for one of those like the value is definitely here for sure uh some other thing in my ego or something not let me get past it you know as an american machinist of course you have a little bit of pride in the whole made in america thing you know i think more than the average nice knife person would have because obviously it's affected my job like i don't make knives but i could uh, i run cnc's i could definitely make anything on this knife if anything on this knife failed maybe the exception of the blade because i don't feel like heat treating the damn thing but not that i couldn't or didn't get it done send it off or whatever else but i think we can make any part of this knife fairly easy at the shop i work at like there is not a whole lot to this thing that's going to be hard as far as the machine aspect of it and i don't think you can make the blade for 50 bucks honestly like as an american machinist i'm straight straight up telling you 
I don't think I can make that blade for 50 bucks. Not heat treated, ground acid stone washed. Like that thing is sick, dude, for 50 bucks. Shit. Yeah, can't mess with that thing. All right, another comparison. Let's go with the Kubi this time. So, you know, I love my ZT, so I gotta throw another ZT up in there. I think this one's the, what is this in the 609? Yeah, the 609. So, see the resemblance there? I damn sure do. I mean, obviously you gotta look past colors and all that stuff, but I'm just talking about size and like general carry and that sort of thing. And, you know, like once again, like I think this was, this was a little bit cheaper than the other one. I wanna say this one was like 38 or 40 or something. So it, it was even cheaper than the damn designs. Let me throw that one back out there too so you guys can still see it. So it was even cheaper than the, than the damn designs. But once again, this is a $300 knife and this is a 50 bucks, not even 50 bucks. Like, you can almost buy six of those for what that one costs. That's crazy to me. Like the value is just crazy. And it's, you know, it's got a good feel to it. Like it honestly feels good. And to be honest, between these two, I'd rather play with this one than this one. Like this is probably my least favorite ZT that, that I've ever gotten. I got quite a few knives from uh, Knives of Our Lives Colorado Dave when he was doing his, you know, kind of sell off and that sort of thing. And you know, he alluded to needing money for family affairs or whatever else. And like, I, I don't know, like, to me, I like to help a guy out like that, and I wanted to check the knives out. Uh, out of all the ones I've got, all the ZTs I got, this probably this is probably the only ZT I could really give two craps about. Like honestly, if someone offered me the right amount of money for it, it'd be gone today. I couldn't care less about this one. But the other ones are pretty cool. Uh, sorry to go off a tangent there, but man, it's just a it's it's hard to compare the American blades versus the Chinese blades. You just can't. The value's there, man. Like. I don't know how else to say that. It's just crazy, man. Now, once again, this one, not super fond of the pocket clip. I think Alex said he liked it pretty good when he was playing with it the other day, and I think Jeremy said he liked it as well, but both those guys are used to carrying much smaller knives, so, you know, it's all what you get used to, you know? Like, you can carry anything big, small, whatever. Uh, and, you know, obviously, the, the China-made thing, that's debatable whether you like Chinese knives or not. Well, let's do this, all right? Just for just for comparison. Okay, everybody's talking. They don't like Chinese knives. Well, I understand everybody, but let's say some people say they don't like Chinese knives. And then I break out something like this. <laughs> this is the Taiwan Chinese DLC, or DLT rather, DLT uh, Tough. This is a sick knife, man. Honestly, since I got this thing, I haven't really stopped playing with it. It's always been kind of around me, playing with it at night, whatever else, driving my wife crazy with it, having fun. Like, you want to hear another one on top of that? Let's go with another one. Well, this one's crew wear, in case you didn't know. Another one. The bombshell. Like, this thing is sick, dude. Like, this one's been customized. I just got this one from Evolve DDC the other day. It's a pretty badass knife. 20 CV and everything else. Uh, but anyway, so both of those are made in Taiwan. You know, like, so does that make them less, more? You know, uh, 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 both these are super expensive. They were super pricey, you know. Like, neither one of those was cheap. Uh, those crush them as far as value goes. So, I don't know. Just kind of my thoughts on the whole situation with the the Chinese knives. And, and the, well, I won't even say Chinese knives, but the $50 knife. If, if any American machinist out there or anybody can make these. Like, let's take Chavez or you know, Jake Hoback. These guys are machinists. They were machinists before they were knife makers. I'm not sure about Hoback, but Chavez definitely was. He probably worked in the same field I did for years before he decided to make his own knives. How can you work in a field like that and then turn around and send parts out to China to get manufactured because you know it's cheaper? That's the only thing. I mean, it's the reason they're, they're doing quality work for, you know, inexpensive prices. You just can't mess with it, man. You know, like, <clears throat> hard to beat them. But anyway, uh, to sum the whole thing up, the knife snobbery of me, <laughs> I'm not going to carry these two. I'm not. I mean, especially when you could carry like these two. I mean, or, you know, like the two that I compared them to. I mean, go with these two, you know, like you're going to carry those or even this one. Like if I have the choice, I'm going to carry these. What kind of solidified it for me is I had to do some stucco repair yesterday, which is, if you've never done it, it sucks. It's a nasty job. You know, it's, it's not fun at all. And what knife did I grab? I grabbed the Cold Steel Recon. That's the shittiest job I have. And I grabbed the, the, best shitty knife I could, which my cold steel, cold steel recon. I could have grabbed either one of those. I mean, I kind of knew already that I wanted to give these away anyhow, but you know, I already, did, already gave, or told Alex I was gonna give him one of them. And uh, as a matter of fact, Middle Age Moto, if you're watching this, you want a knife, hit me on Instagram, at Satu Dave, S-A-T-U-D-A-V-E, hit me up. If you want one, DM me, man. I'll send it to you for nothing. It won't cost you nothing, man. I'll just send it to you. All right, guys, we're gonna sum it up there. 
Y'all be good. Later.